Hey everyone, Path here, and in this video I want to briefly discuss one of the laws of thermodynamics, specifically the first law. Written mathematically, it looks something like this, or sometimes like this, but we'll be trying to understand it conceptually and keeping the mathematics as simple as possible. And we'll also see why it's written in two different ways that look contradictory to each other. So if you enjoy this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Now, it is often said that the first law of thermodynamics is simply a version of the law of conservation of energy. Simply put, conservation of energy tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transferred from one category to another. So what does this have to do with the first law of thermodynamics? To answer this question, let's first understand what each of the terms in this equation mean. If we imagine that the system that we want to study in this scenario, in order to try and understand this equation, is a gas within a box made up of lots of little gas molecules, then this term in the equation, delta U, refers to the change in the internal energy of our system. Now, internal energy can be thought of as a measure of the state that our system happens to be in as a whole. Even though our system, our gas, is made up of millions of tiny little particles, and we can't track each one of their positions and velocities at each point in time, we can know something about the gas as a whole by knowing its internal energy. Specifically, the internal energy measures how much energy there is within our system, or how much energy it took to make our system from scratch. How much energy would we have to put in to bring together this many particles with, for example, this particle moving at this speed in this direction at this point in time, and this particle moving with this speed in this direction, and so on and so forth. So that's a brief overview of internal energy. If you want to know more, I'll leave some resources in the description below. But what the first law of thermodynamics does is to look at the change in the internal energy of our system. How does the energy contained within the gas increase or decrease over time? Well, it looks like it does this in one of two ways, as shown by the right-hand side of this equation. The first is heating. When the gas is heated, its internal energy increases. Now, I've already made a detailed video discussing what heat means in a thermodynamic context and how this is different to our day-to-day -day usage of the word heat. Check it out up here if you haven't seen it already. But in a nutshell, heat refers to the transfer of energy, either to or from our system, that is not directly related to any large scale or macroscopic forces acting on or exerted by our system. So for example, if we were to place a flame next to our box, this would transfer energy to our system. This is what we mean by heating, because there are no large scale forces acting on the box that are resulting in the transfer of energy. And so the two main things to remember about heat as is defined in thermodynamics. Firstly, it is a transfer of energy, which is why often it doesn't make sense to say things like heat energy or heat transfer. And secondly, heat is the transfer of energy either to or from our system without any macroscopic or large scale forces being present. An example of an energy transfer with macroscopic forces present is the following. Let's imagine that instead of one of the walls of our container, we now have a piston. And as the gas particles move around, they exert a force on this piston. That causes the piston to move outward. Well, in this scenario, because the gas molecules are interacting with the piston on a small scale, overall that results on a large scale force that we can actually measure. This is the force that actually causes our piston to move outward. And so this kind of energy transfer, in this case energy transferred from our gas to its surroundings, specifically the piston, is not a form of heating because there's a macroscopic force here. This kind of energy transfer is instead known as work. The energy transferred is equal to the work done by the gas on the piston. And this kind of energy transfer is exactly what the second term in our main equation is referring to. W is defined as the work done by our system, in this case by our gas, onto its surroundings. So overall, the equation relating to the first law of thermodynamics reads the following the change in the internal energy of our system is equal to any energy it gains as a result of heating minus any energy it loses as a result of the work it does on its surroundings. This is why it's a version of the law of conservation of energy. All we're being told here is that if the internal energy of our system is to change, then this can only happen if there is some form of energy transfer either to our system or from our system. And it's worth clarifying here that we're not saying that only heat can transfer energy to the system because it's positive 
and work can transfer energy away from the system. No, that's not the case at all, because the value of Q could be negative, for example, if the system is heating its surroundings. And equally, if the surroundings of our system do work on it, then W could be negative as well. Makes sense, right? We do work on the system, we transfer energy to it, and its internal energy increases. And so the point is that our system cannot just magically gain or lose energy. Some form of energy must be transferred to it or from it in order for the internal energy to change. Now, we've already talked a little bit about the sign conventions here. We've defined Q as the energy transferred to our system due to heating, whereas we've defined W as the energy transferred from our system due to work done by the system on its surroundings. Some people find this convention a bit strange and so choose to define the work term the other way around. Specifically, they define it as the work done on our system by the surroundings. And so in both cases now, we note a positive value for the energy transfer if the energy is being transferred to our system, and the value becomes negative if the energy is being transferred away from the system. The only change here, though, is that if we define W as the work done on our system, then we have to put a plus sign in our original equation. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which convention we choose as long as we are consistent with our definitions once we have chosen them. Now, it's important to note that this way of writing the first law, either convention, only works if we're assumed that there is no transfer of matter to or from the system. In other words, we're assuming that no particles of gas, in this particular case, leave our system or enter our system. Because if this were to happen, then there could be some form of energy transfer with these particles and we would have to include other terms in our first law equation in order for us to account for this type of energy transfer. Only then would our equation still be consistent with the law of conservation of energy. But the point is, I think the most commonly seen equation representing the first law of thermodynamics is this one here, and now we've seen what it actually represents in some basic detail. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Hit that bell button if you'd like to be notified when I upload, and please do check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.